Tiffany Haynes here. Welcome back to God's Math. And I am excited, all right, because this is one of my all-time favorite stories in the Bible about God's math. It is literally like watching the masterclass of the process for God to do his math in your life. And so it is with great pleasure that uh, we walk through uh, one of the most supernatural multiplication stories in the Bible together, the two fish and five loaves. Okay. So let's get into it. Let's first have a refresher. Um, we've heard this story probably many times. We probably, if you grew up in the church, you heard this as a kid. You've heard all the things, right? But I want to just kind of take us all back and we're just going to reread the story. What I love about this story, it is, is it's in every gospel. And I happen to read this story in every single gospel. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it was really uh, challenging, like, which version do I share? Which version do we go over? Because different accounts point out different things uh, that I deemed to be very significant to us unpacking um, God's math and how he would like to leverage his math in your life. So we're going to go with John for the purposes of our training today. We're going to go with John. So let's get into it. So um, let me make it a little bigger for myself. Here we go. All right. So John chapter six, verses one through eight. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is in the Sea of Tiberias. OK, probably saying that wrong. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. So he was not necessarily inviting a crowd. But he was being noticed because of the miracles that he was doing. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. So he's there with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews was nigh. So there happened to be um, already a crowd, right? Because the Passover was near. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, when should we buy bread that these may eat? And he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon's Peter's brother, saith unto him, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? So how are we going to make this stretch? And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was a much grass in the place. So the men sat down and number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they filled, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves and remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus said, this is a truth. This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. OK, so let's go to Matthew, the same story. Watch this because there's some points in that story that I want to point out. Um, verse 19 here. When he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Okay, I want to point that out because in John's version, they just talk about him blessing the food. They don't talk about him breaking the bread, okay? So I want to point that out or breaking. He doesn't say the breaking the food. OK, breaking the fish and the bread. Um, so I want to point that out. I also want to point out um, right here, right here, verse 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. And the time is now past. It's getting late. Send the multitude away 
that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Like, like let's, let's, it's getting late. Let's make sure they can get out of here. And Jesus said unto them, they need not depart. Give ye them to eat. They don't need to leave. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fish. Okay, when, where, how, and why are we going to make this feed 5,000 people? All right, so I want to bring this version up because I want to make sure as we dissect this story that we have all um, of the principles that we're going to cover. Here's the first part that I want to dissect is this multitude the reason why they got to be a part of such uh, an incredible miracle that we all talk about to this day, the reason why they get to be a part of that is because they were seeking first the kingdom of God. They were pursuing what they should be pursuing first, which is becoming more righteous. They were looking for healing. They were looking for anything he was going to say that was of significance. They were wanting to be in the room and be near him. And it speaks to, okay, my very first point, which is to truly activate God's math in your life. You must first seek first the kingdom of God, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be. I really think that we forget about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He made it a point to not say, um, seek me at some point. He made it a point to say, seek first the kingdom of God. What is the very first thing you do when you wake up? When you wake up, are you seeking first the kingdom of God? What is the very first thing you do when you're considering uh, a job opportunity or a business opportunity or to travel? Are you seeking first the kingdom of God? So are you considering him? He says, consider me in all your ways. Acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your path. path. Are you doing that? OK, so the very first thing that I want you to, to extract out of this story is they were in the right place at the right time because they were in his presence. They were in the right place at the right time because they were in his presence under his tutelage, listening for the next thing he was going to say. They were in his proximity. By way of proximity, they were a part of this miracle. And what I want to encourage you is that the very first thing I want you to do as you evaluate your life and your lifestyle and your and the way that you run your day and your evenings and your decision making, are you seeking first the kingdom of God? Are you acknowledging him in all your ways so that he can direct your path? Because any path God directs is going to be a path that's going to be having God's math attached. If he's directing it, it's going to always have God's math attached because it, naturally he's a multiplier. Naturally, the seed is going to duplicate. So if you're seeking first the kingdom of God, that's going to naturally purify the seed so that what you see multiply will be righteous. OK. So that is the first place. The, the second thing I want you to recognize is that these this multitude of people were in a desert place. They were in a desert place. And what I want you to learn from that is, and, and it's, it's what I've learned from my own story, is it doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter. A lot of you are gauging and judging and trying to estimate what God is going to do in your life based off of where you began or where you are now or what your bank account looks like right now or what your situationship looks like right now. What I'm telling you is the more secluded the place Right. The more desert of a place, uh, the higher the chance he's going to show up and show out just because of the fact he'll get all the glory. Just because of the fact there'll be no confusion if you participated in this outcome. You have to understand, I started out with not no entrepreneurs in my family bankrupt. OK, anytime I had something, I spent it all the way back down to zero. I started there. And from there, I built the business. From there, uh, I made um, multiple millions of dollars in entrepreneurship. From there, I now own over 100 real estate properties. From th That's where I started, in a desert place. 
in a desert. He loves a good raggedy beginning. Do you hear me? It gets excited about it. Get, sometimes when the beginning is too fancy, he'll raggedy it up a little bit so that now I can get all the glory. Thank you. Okay, now I need to I need to get all I need to extract out all the glory out of this. And so what I want you to understand is your desert place where you are right now. If anything, it's 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 the sheer sign that a miracle is on the way for you, that God's math, that you're eligible for God's math by you just being in a desert place. So be encouraged by that. Okay, so the next thing is I want you to uh, remember that it was a child that had the five that had the two fish and five loaves of bread that it was a child and it's it's not a coincidence that he says and said verily I say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven Matthew 18:3 what i'm trying to uh make make sure you make the connection with is that this was a child i don't know that an adult would have gave up their whole food, their whole their whole lunch if that's all they had they would have been too smart to know that if I give this up, I might get a bite. I might get a bite, but if that, I may not even, I may not even be considered if I give them everything. If I give them my my two fish, my five loaves, I'm looking around, I see all these people. If I if I give it away, then I'm not going to see it again because I can see with my eyes what this little bit needs to do. And I know that this little bit is not enough. Me as an adult might be a little bit selfish and said, anybody got food? Mm. Nobody, nobody, anybody got anything? An adult would have probably looked out for themselves, but a child said, I do. I have two fish and I have five loaves of bread. I have my lunch. This is what I have. I don't have much, but what I have, you can have. And by nature of him giving it away, God activated the promise of pressed down, shaking together and running over. By giving it away, God activated the promise of that uh, whatever you whatever you give will be given back to you. He activated the promise of sowing with such great faith that even though this is all I have, I'm going to be okay. He activated the promise of my gift will make room for you. He activated it because he gave it away. And the only reason why he gave it away, because like a child, he didn't know to be as selfish as we can sometimes be as adults. To overthink things, to think we know it all, to think that our strategy is probably a little bit better than God's strategy, because God's probably not considering the fact that that's all I got. Become as little children. And he gave it away. Not knowing if he'd ever see it back. And he gave it away. So our second principle that we get out of God's math is we have to have childlike faith. We have to have crazy faith. We have to have the type of faith where we know our God does not fail. A superhero faith that we little kids just believe in superheroes and put capes on their back and act as if they're the superhero in the house because they believe it. And no, there's no one that can convince them otherwise. And I want, God is saying, I need you to be like that. Radical, radical faith. Even his disciples didn't have this faith. You know why they didn't have this faith? Because they said, God, we need to let them go. They're hungry. Or Jesus, Jesus, we need to let them go. They're hungry. And Jesus said, I ain't going nowhere. They'll stay right here. They didn't even have the faith to say, Jesus, hey, they're hungry. Can we do a miracle? And uh, well, we can just all stay right here and stay in the pocket and stay where well, we can. What miracle can we do? I know it's something we can do. I, I'm, I'm, I, I got a. I got something in my belly. I'm thinking we can do a miracle. 
Nope. They're like, we got to let them go. It's getting late. And so I want you, as you begin to activate God's math in your life, I want you to have childlike faith. Crazy, ridiculous faith. Just the humility and the beauty of the ignorance of a child. Just give it, here you, here you go. This is what I got, guys. <laughs> you can have it. Sure. This is a, sure, take it. Take it. I'm telling you, every time I read that, it does something to me where I'm, what am I not, what am I holding on to with my smart self that I need to say? Take it. Take it. I just I don't have much, but what little I have is yours. The little boy didn't even know he was going to do a miracle. He just gave up his lunch. He didn't even know that Jesus was about to feed the 5,000. He gave it up anyway. He gave it up before he knew that. What is it in your life that you have been holding on to that it's time to say, take it. You can have it. Okay. Now. This is going to be done in two parts. This is going to be done in two parts for this reason that I really want to dissect the rest of this and take my time on it. And I want you to begin to dissect what we've gone over so far. So we're analyzing our day. Are we seeking first the kingdom of God so that all 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 of uh, his righteousness can be added? All the things that we want in life can be added. Are we seeking first the kingdom of God? Are we trying to measure what he's going to do by where we are? We're going to repent for that now. We're going to decree and declare that where we are is just the right place for our miracle. And are we being like a little child and giving it away? Whatever that thing is, I want you to think about all the things that you might be holding on to that you need to give it away. And I want you to focus on giving it away. All right. I'll see you on part two.